see you out there, but I know you're there. <laughs> I'll just show you the governor said, boy, the future really is bright. So uh, let me begin. Um, I'm Jim Estep, the president and CEO of the High Technology Foundation. And I wanted to thank everybody for uh, <coughs> taking the time to come out and, and uh, join us for this groundbreaking for the phase three road system into the I-79 Technology Park to uh, uh, hear some remarks from our Marion County Commission President, Mr. Elliott, as well as our governor. Um, first, I wanted to uh, recognize, I think there's a couple people in the audience that I saw earlier. If you're still out there, just raise your hand. <clears throat> uh, we have uh, Mr. Ryan Thorne with Senator Manchin's office. We had um, Mr. Aaron Spork with Senator Capito's office, as well as Jessica Cross. Everyone, just just thank you guys for coming. Uh, I also noticed we had the Bridgeport Mayor, uh, Mr. Andy Lang. They couldn't be here today, but I wanted to recognize the other county commissioners, Mr. Rick Garcia. Ernie Van Gelder. Um, Marion County Commission has been just an absolute fantastic partner for us, and I'm looking forward to continuing our work together. Also, wanted to recognize uh, Mr. Dave Hinkle. Dave, are you still? Also, um, I wanted to recognize one of our board members, our board members, Mr. Mike Green. Okay, well, bear with me as I try to read this paper and fight the wind. Uh, I wanted to begin this afternoon by uh, giving special recognition to the great team at the West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, they, of course, are the folks who are administering the money for our road project. And they've just been absolutely incredible. They've been great partners for us, incredibly professional, and I really value that relationship. Uh, as you drove in here today, I'm sure you saw the, you were able to see the significant progress that we've already made on our road system. And I'd like to commend Mountaineer Contracting. I think we had some folks from Mountaineer Contracting. Are you still? Raise your hand if you're from They've just done an amazing job, kept us ahead of schedule, and really are true professionals. Now, to help you get a little better idea of how our road system fits into phase three and into the park, if you look on the back of your program, we've included a layout of our master plan so you can kind of get a sense of where the new road system comes in. We've also positioned this platform strategically in the sun and also about 100 yards in front of uh, the cul-de-sac that you can see on that master plan. Um, we also have some of the more details of the plans on easels. So let me begin with some prepared remarks. Um, so we're excited to have the new road system underway here in the park, not just because it's a road, a new road, but <clears throat> also because it represents an incredible asset for us. It's an incredible asset that's going to help us continue our economic diversification strategy. In fact, I believe the land the road is opening up in phase three 
will not only help us continue those efforts, but actually ramp them up significantly. And the High Technology Foundation's economic diversification efforts are strategically focused on building the basis of a knowledge sector in our region. And this is really important because the knowledge sector is the fastest growing economic sector in the country. And we must participate in it meaningfully if we hope to have a balanced, healthy economy. Now we're building the basis for this um, knowledge sector by trying to create a business case. And that business case provides a reason for knowledge sector companies to want to come to our state in the first place. The stronger we can make that business case, the more industries will want to be here. <clears throat> And our strategy for growing the business case is the recruitment of federal operations to the I-79 technology. And the agencies that we're trying to recruit have two important characteristics. First, first they must have a STEM orientation. And they must also provide significant contracting. Why don't you take the ball? So our strategy for building the business case is the recruitment of federal operations to the I-79 Technology Park who have two important characteristics. First, we want them to have a STEM orientation. And second, they must have a significant contracting opportunity that they will provide in our community. The STEM orientation is important because we want to grow knowledge sector jobs contracting opportunities are important because they create the reason for these companies to want to be in our community in the first place. It's the all-time fundamental business motivation. Companies want to make money and we get them here by creating environments so that they can do just that. The more contracting opportunities that become available in our region, <clears throat> the more these companies will want to be a part of our community. So recruiting federal operations increases the contracting opportunities. Moreover, the emphasis the federal government puts on small business participation in federal contracting helps us establish an, a great ecosystem for fostering innovation and entrepreneurship, which, by the way, dovetails nicely into some of the recent entrepreneurial efforts at both WVU and Marshall. So a fundamental question underpinning our strategy is why would federal agencies want to move to West Virginia in the first place? You know, why would they want to come here? Well, as it turns out, there happens to be an increasing push to reduce the number of federal operations in the greater DC area. Sorry, Randy. And there's these reasons, for, there's a couple of very important reasons for this. First, the cost of operations in the DC area has become astronomical. And it's actually becoming recognized as a contributor to our national debt. Second, there is such a density of federal operations in that area that if, God forbid, someone were to explode a dirty bomb in some place like Manassas, it would potentially make 9-11 look like a day in the park. These are really very compelling <coughs> motivators for the relocation of these federal agencies, but they also represent incredible opportunities for us. Some recent examples of the push for relocation include the USDA headquarters move to Kansas City and the relocation of 4,000 FBI jobs to Alabama. And by the way, let me say that the govern governor was instrumental in trying to help us get some of the USDA work with the Kansas City, but we gave it a heck of an effort. Now, it's really important to understand that the USDA and the FBI jobs are really only the tip of the iceberg. And there's a whole lot of other opportunities teeing up that we really need to be well positioned to take advantage of. Now, as it turns out, North Central West Virginia is a very attractive place for relocation because we are geographically far enough away from the DC region to avoid the, these issues, but not too far away as to introduce problems such as resistance to staff relocation. And this has become a major issue for the USDA relocation effort because the staff that, the staff that, that 
at the USDA don't want to relocate to Kansas City. And over half of the 700 people identified for relocate for relocation have announced that they want to resign. <clears throat> now you can imagine for a moment how much more palatable it would be to those 700 people to relocate just over the mountains to North Central West Virginia where they could still reasonably participate in the Northern Virginia community. Now in addition to that, we have a road system including I-68 <clears throat> and Quarter H that makes access from the DC region very efficient. And most importantly, we have an airport just down the road here that can accommodate any type of aircraft and has daily flights in and out of the DC area. Now these assets make West Virginia an especially attractive place. In fact, we're a sweet spot for many of these relocations. So the next question might be, um, can we actually get federal agencies to come to North Central West Virginia? Well, about 10 years ago, we were competitively selected as a site for one of the most advanced supercomputing centers in the country. Today, we have three of the world's fastest supercomputers operating in the <clears throat> lower level of the building that's just behind you. A few years after that, we were competitively selected as a site for one of our nation's most advanced satellite ground stations, the GOES-R program. This federal operation provides weather and climate data for the entire hemisphere of the planet. A year or so after that, we were competitively selected as a location for what is the second most important satellite ground station, the Joint Polar Satellite System. And just a few years ago, <clears throat> we were able to convince the U.S. Department of Commerce to relocate the agency's entire cybersecurity, cybersecurity program to the park. And I believe we have several folks from that program here with us today. Now, most importantly, these programs are making a significant contribution to the development of the regional business case that I mentioned. For example, in the summer of 2018, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration competitively awarded a $553 million contract to General Dynamics for, for support of the supercomputing center. Earlier this year, the U.S. Commerce Department awarded a $100 million contract to Lidos to support their cybersecurity program. Now, contracting opportunities of this magnitude establish the fundamental basis for us to be an attractive location for knowledge sector companies. But therefore, it stands to reason that our objective should be to recruit as many of these as we can so that we can make the critical mass of the business case as big as possible. And this is where the phase three of the I-79 Technology Park comes into play. The new building pads that will be available around this road system are being offered for free to federal operations that meet our criteria and are looking for relocation sites. Now we're doing everything we can <clears throat> to equip these sites with advanced power and telecommunications infrastructure to make them as attractive as possible, but it all begins with basic road, water, and sewer infrastructure. So this road system that we're here today to recognize is way more than just a road. It represents an incredible tool in our state's efforts to diversify. And I'd like to particularly take a moment to thank Governor Justice, not just for the water, but for the support that you've given this project from the very beginning. Um, you know, when I first talked to the governor about this some time ago, it was pretty clear to me that he fully understood not only the critical importance of economic diversification, but he also recognized the need for a knowledge sector emphasis. The governor wants more jobs for all West Virginians, including those who want to work in the knowledge sector. And I believe he knows that this kind of effort helps do just that. I believe the governor also understands that as we have success, it will address another major economic handicap that has plagued West Virginia for decades, namely our 50th place ranking in educational attainment. We simply haven't done a good enough job to create a, se a sector in which West Virginia citizens with higher educational attainment could stay in the state and live. Now this has left us with an unbalanced workforce demographic that has been a major reason 
that we've not kept up with the national economy and why we consistently have been ranked 50th. And I can tell you from uh, directly talking with the governor, and I'm sure you all heard it yourself, he's repeatedly said he's tired of being 50th, and so are we, governor. And so I'm looking very much forward to working with the governor and his administration going forward to leverage this asset that we're building, trying to recruit more federal operations, and continue our knowledge sector economic diversification. So I made it through that. <laughs> Barely. And the next thing I'd like to do, besides get a drink of water, is ask uh, our Marion County Commission President, Mr. Randy Elephant, Elliot, to say a few words. Thank you, Jim. I'm going to try to step back here where the sun's not in my eyes. It's kind of blinding. There we go. A little bit better here. Same trouble trying to keep the notes here in front of me. But when it comes to a plan to strengthen and diversify our state's economy, the West Virginia High Tech Consortium for the last 25 years has done just that through knowledge, excellence, innovation, and West Virginia values. The Marion County Commission is pleased to see that this grant for the continued development and investment into the I-79 Technology Park in Marion County. The I-79 Technology Park off where free land becomes a powerful tool for both meeting federal anchor requirements and enabling economic diversification. The cost and infrastructure advantages of locating operations at the I-79 Technology Park make it the absolute best choice. There is no other economic diversification opportunity like the I-79 Technology Park in the whole state of West Virginia. There is no doubt that this park represents one of the most mature and high potential tools available to the state of West Virginia for economic restructuring on a large scale, and this project is proof of that. Upon completion of this initial road segment, West Virginia's competitive ability to achieve sustained economic resilience will be significantly increased. This is an exciting and important event, not only to represent expansive I-79 Technology Park, but the deployment of a critical West Virginia economic diversification tool. These investments will help create the jobs, services, and infrastructure needed to attract new industries to our community and help our state from the opioid epidemic and the job loss from declining coal jobs and get more West Virginians back to work. I look forward to witnessing the positive impact of these grants on our communities and economy. And I'd like to thank Jim Step and I-79 Technology Park, as well as Governor Justice and the state of West Virginia for investing in Marion County. Let me add that it makes me very proud when I'm driving up and down I-79 and I look in this direction, I see 25 years of development, 25 years of, of economic development. It's created good, high-paying, quality jobs. And I look across the other side of the interstate and I see the millions upon millions being invested in our in our new mall. And I look down at the bottom of the hill and there's banks going in. There's businesses going in. This is what we need. It's things like this that create the atmosphere and the taxes to allow us to build the Palatine Parks, to be able to do the things for our, for our county and our citizens of Marion County. So I say keep on going. Do the best we can. Let's fill up these... Uh, these paths we're building here, let's continue to do everything we can to make Marion County the very place it can be. Thank you very much. I next want to uh, introduce our governor. Um, I didn't know the governor until he ran for the office the first time we met, and we've had several opportunities to have conversations, and, and I've always been very impressed. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, I've been very impressed with his insight into how his insight into what we need to do to balance our economy, uh, his understanding of how we should participate nationally in the uh, national economic sector. And that's always given me a lot of hope and, and, and um, positivity for the future. So as I said earlier, I'm really looking forward to working with him going forward. And I'm anxious to uh, hear some remarks. So Governor, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Jim. Well, the first thing, you know, when I passed Jim that water, and he's got us in the sun here, and I was really just trying to hold his papers down and grab them, and, and I could see this sweat coming off of him, and I could see him 
trying to get through all this and everything. And he had an incredible wealth of knowledge and everything that he was sharing with all of us. I, it, it, you know, he was he made several references to he had, trying to get through it and get a drink of water and everything. And I kept thinking, he may be going down. And, and if he goes down, you know, somebody's going to have to pick up the CPR other than me. I mean, <laughs> but uh, but he made it. And, and, and uh, you know, no, Jim's a friend. He's been a friend a long time. You know, it, it just, uh, anybody that would come here and look, and especially a little skinny guy that grew up in Beckley, West Virginia forever ago, it is beyond amazing. That's all there is to it. And if you just look at the thousand jobs I think that you have here, it is more amazing. And to say, okay, should we invest more dollars here? Well, of course we should. I mean, for crying out loud, you know, it is high tech, very high paying jobs, all the great things that come with it. And if you just think about this, and I think biblically, I've said this so many times, but you know, the Bible tells us to reward those that are doing greatness. You know, we don't have to always spread out all of our eggs. We want to help those that are less fortunate for sure. But just think about Marion County. What this great, you know, commission president, what other commissioners are doing. Think about the, the, all the things from, you know, just everything that is happening right here in your, at your fingertips. We made big time commitment to the airport. It's a project that is absolutely going to boom in this area beyond belief. You've got quarter H coming right. I mean, you've got absolutely quarter H should be the number one priority to, in this state of all highways. I've said it and said it and said it and said it. We need to finish quarter H absolutely in every way, shape, form, or fashion. But again, back to this. I've got to just for one second, I don't ever look at notes. But for one second, I've got to read you just just a couple of things. And and that is just this. Whoa, baby. I'm going to let this up. Go. No, I'm good. I'm good. I could use your water, but I, 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 I'm not going to use that. These things are the things that just blow me away. You know, we're a home to 30 businesses with over 1,000 employees in the list from general, general dynamics all the way down through everything from healthcare management solutions on and on and on. And I'm not going to read to you and go through every one. But you're building 1,632 feet of linear road. And absolutely, if there's any place on earth, and again, go, let's go back to the airport just a second. If there was any place on earth that we needed to invest, it was the airport. I mean, for crying out loud, the next place are just things like just what we have right here. These are incredible jobs, and the potential to come out of D.C., Jim mentioned just this. You know, God forbid, you know, a bad event happening in D.C., but the redundancy issue that may have, that you have such a profound possibility of is right here. There's so many things, it's unbelievable. We don't need in life, you know, I'm a person that really believes. You know, I, I spoke just earlier at a school and I spoke on Jim's dream that they had to name Jobs and Hope because you can't put my name with something. Okay, that, that idea is just simple. It is as simple as just this. It's as simple as just saying, okay, you got people with terrible addictions. We've got to give them treatment. Then we can't just turn them out on the street. We've got to give them a job. We've got to give them training to where they can get a real life job. And then we've got to give them the possibility of expungement or the, or the possibility of getting a driver's license back. And then all of a sudden the loop is closed and you give them an opportunity to come back to life now, think about this. In this situation right here, 
You have the potential of growth beyond belief. For God's sakes, 11, build the road. I mean, absolutely, to give away free pads to your anchor tenants and then grow beyond that? I mean, it's an absolute no-brainer. And then you bring more and more wealth, taxation, all kinds of good things right into the lap of the county that's absolutely knocking it out of the park. And I congratulate Jim. I congratulate our board, you know, our commission president and, uh, and, and other commissioners. I congratulate all the delegates and the people that are sitting out here that make all the wheels turn. This is absolutely it. I mean, this is not rocket science. And please forgive the pun. I mean, it is truly not that hard. It is not that hard to drive up and down the road and see where it's really happening and where all the possibilities are. And then, for God's sakes, do something. Just do something and support it. So really and truly, I, I'm really proud to be here with you, you know, and to be, you know, somebody that's all in, on board. I congratulate you all and everything you're doing. And I just thank you for the chance to be here. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we still have some refreshments, um, I think, back there. And um, we also have our uh, master plans laid out. So please feel free to mingle or take any refreshments. And uh, again, let me say thank you all for coming out here today and bearing with me and, and uh, getting through this. So thank you. and. Uh, I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you.